All right, I'm here today with Tony. Uh, he has some beehives that he's acquired, and and I want to give a little history into these hives before we tear into them for the first time. In how many years, Tony? At least fifty. These have not been opened in fifty years. No, my father-in-law uh, got them from his father-in-law when he passed away, and he's had them behind a the shed for a few years, and never touched them. And last year we moved them to my place because he was moving that shed. And I put them here in June last year and have not touched them myself. Didn't know what to do, so I called Joe out to give me some lessons here. Okay, so the plan of attack, we, as of last year, all three of these hives were viable and going. Right now, there's only one showing signs of activity. Uh, so what we're going to do is... We can rob from the two dead ones to create some more good ones. He has one brand new box. Let me get this thing on a swivel. There, we're gonna get that one set up. We're gonna do some splits out of this viable one. I brought a couple nukes. Uh, we'll just see what we got once we get in there. I am hoping there's frames in there. I wanna show you guys what we found in this one though. No frames, it's just a box, so that's a bad deal as far as getting out of it. You can do it, you can do what they call a cutout, but it's definitely not as easy as if there are frames. I'll show this to you. Everybody needs to remember these hives haven't been gotten into pretty much forever. <laughs> you can see the shape of the boxes. Um, you know, all of what I would say, Tony, the reason one of the reasons these bees have lived so well is because of all the holes. It's giving them ventilation. Bees' worst enemy is moisture. And heat. Not heat. No? No. Bees live down in Texas and every other state. Hmm. No problem. About it's moisture. Twenty or something they die at. They have a way of ventilating their own hives with just the entrance. Hmm. Now it is good to have a ventilation hole on top for air circulation. But bees are really good at managing temperature. Really? I know they keep themselves warm through winter. Mm-hmm. But moisture is their enemy. Because bees, you got to remember, inside their hive in the winter, they're in a ball, a cluster. And they're creating heat. Well, the air coming in hits that heat, condensates on the lid, or up high, drips right back down on them if there's not ventilation. Where yours has ventilation pretty much everywhere, that's one of the reasons I think that these bees have done so well. This metal box has always been the most viable okay. of the three. That's good to know. So this is, uh, I don't think you can get better genetics than bees that have lived right here or near here for that many years. We moved them from seven miles away. Seven miles away, okay. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to let this camera roll and uh, make sure that everything's good. We're going to get some tools out. We're going to pop the top. I'm not going to put any gear on unless they start getting pissy. These are two. Do you have either? either mm -hmm. Okay, you have a hive tool. Do you have a frame puller? I don't have a frame puller. Okay, pretty handy to have. Tony here, I'm giving him lessons as we go. Uh, he's just kind of getting into it. He wants to learn the, the ways of beekeeping. So, here we go. Pop the top. The upset they get. There is frames. Okay, so what we'll do, Tony, as we go here, is we're going to clean all this up. Okay. Uh, so it's easier for you to work them after this and you'll kind of have an idea on how to do it so we'll set the top off to the side these are going to be a nightmare to get out oh i bet um, but they've we'll been just, glued in there for a few years we'll get a, a knife here too i have a long clay knife that i use to kind of slice down to cut comb apart so what type of bees are these it's so hard to say. Is it? You get you mainly in our area. You have two main different types. You have Italians and Coriolans. 
These are darker bees, so I'm assuming these are probably Cariolans. Italians are more yellow, kind of a lighter color, but they interbreed, you know, with every other feral hive, and so it's really hard to say. <clears throat> we even have a few guys around here doing the Russian bees, and they're a really dark colored bee, and real pissy, <laughs> real Real irritable. Just like the Russians, huh? Just like Russians, real irritable. Okay, so get started here. This is gonna be a chore of all chores, I can say that right now. They aren't showing any something you can do when you first pop the top. You can wave your hand over them. And they stick their butts in the air and stick out their stingers you know you need to put on a coat, a jacket. If you do that and they just ignore you like they are right now, typically you can mess with them. I was always told when they're running around and they're happy collecting pollen, they're usually not near as aggressive. Yep, on the nice warm sunny days when the nectar's flowing and pollen's coming in, they're less likely. They're to... less likely. Doesn't mean they won't, Yeah. but they're less likely. On a, on a day that's cloudy and rainy, and I won't even hardly get in my hives that way without a jacket on. So our goal here is just to start cleaning this stuff up. I'll just toss it on the ground here. This is amazing. So how many years have you been doing this? About six years. What got you into it? Pollination. We, we do gardens. Up, We live up behind Grangeville. And uh, we never seen honeybees up there, ever. And my wife and I always said, boy, if we, we do raspberries and everything else. And my wife always said, why don't we get some honeybees? And, and so I started looking into it. And I didn't have anyone to show me the ropes. And so I just started reading a lot. And I got my first hive, and then my second hive, and it kind of blew up from there. I'm down to this. So that's kind of how it all got started for me. And once people found out I did honeybees, it just blew up. People started calling me for swarms, removals. I have a construction background, so... This is what you're doing now for... Not for 11. Size. Firefighting? In the I do, and I also own my own business too. But this is kind of a, becoming a busy hobby. I do firefighting just for the summer months. Could be a good year for that this year. Yeah, it could be a lot of fuel. I'm going to be honest with you here, Tony. I'm going to start here. Getting the first few frames out is always the worst. Need a chainsaw. Yeah. Darn near. No way, guys. So what I've got going here, everybody, is their comb is they got burr comb attached to every stinking point on these boxes that I can see. Yellow jack coming out of this other one. Propolis glue and everything in like you wouldn't believe. Propolis is what is bee glue. That's how they glue everything together. Glue the tops down, glue frames in. All this you see built up here. This is all propolis. This one wouldn't happen to be the queen mother. Huge. That's a drone. That's a male bee. It's huge. Um, they can't sting. Huh. And the only thing they do is breed with the, with the queens. <laughs> they don't gather nectar. They don't gather honey or pollen. So they got the best job. They sit around in the hive waiting for a new queen to be born to breed. That's all they do. Hmm. 
they get kicked out in the winter and come fall they'll get kicked out of the hive Trying to go easy so I don't do too much damage to it and all the comb. But that's going to be somewhat impossible. It'll be a healthier hive though when we're done. When we're done, and, and it'll be easier to manage. I mean, you'll actually be able to get into it. I've always kind of wanted to be into doing some bee work myself, like you were saying, especially with the reading on the internet lately that we're having. What is there, nine bees now they've endangered in the last year? Honey bees? You know, I don't know the exact count, but some species of bees are becoming endangered. Okay. Here's the first frame. Let's just take a look at what we got. So they use plastic foundation on these frames. I see nectar here, Tony. You see this? Liquid? Black jelly? No, no, it's li clear liquid. Yeah. That's nectar. This stuff here in these cells here, that colors, that's yeah. pollen. So what we'll do is we're going to clean up these frames. The bees are being very gentle. They aren't offering to sting me much. They've bumped me a couple times, it's warning me. Yeah, I noticed that when I was banging on this box last year, they just kept headbutting me. Yeah, that's what they do. And that's a warning before they sting, because honeybees can only sting once and it kills them. And after so, about like the fourth or fifth bump, I finally got stung. And then I, it wasn't like I got stung 50 times, but I got stung once. Yeah. yeah. But we haven't even smoked these guys yet. Nope, not even, haven't even smoked them. So now that we got the first one out, hopefully the rest will be easier. Give me. Give you a kiss. Yeah, he bumped me pretty good. Of course, I wouldn't. I don't blame them because here we are tearing their house apart. A bunch of them are moving off this box into this one. Are they searching? Well, yeah, they're just figuring out what they're gonna do. You don't happen to hold an old bucket laying here, do you? I have some at the house. You want me to go get you one? Yeah, I was just thinking, because a lot of this comb, you can, you can render it down and make good beeswax out of it. Can you? Oh, yeah. Do you want it? If you don't want it, I'll take it. I don't know how to do it yet. Okay, I'll actually, I can show you how to do that. Too. I'll get you a bucket. I'm going to put this video on pause for a minute until Tony gets back. I want him to kind of, since he's learning here, so we'll put you on pause, everybody. All right, so we're back. Tony went and got me a bucket, and in the meantime, I started breaking into this other hive. And seeing if these frames were salvageable, we'll mess with that again later. Tony and I were just discussing possibly why these other two hives died out. And from going through this one hive so far, it looks like starvation to me. They just ran out of honey and Tony asked what we could have done or what he could have done to have saved them and the answer to that question is in the fall you can uh, make sugar patties um, and you set them you make a little take a high box and you cut it in about half and you take a, like a half inch hardware cloth and you staple that to the bottom and then you make up some sugar. So you take sugar, about 16 pounds of sugar, about three cups of water and you mix it and it becomes like a real thick gooey paste. And you put it in that, that little box you've made on a flat surface, <clears throat> kind of smear it out and then you let it dry. And it's called fondant, that's what they call it. 
and uh, then you come up just before winter or just before, once it starts cooling down and you put that on your hive now you gotta punch some holes in through it for ventilation to get up through and then bees if they run out of honey they can come up and they'll eat that sugar throughout the winter it's just like uh, extra security so this winter I came out and we got them in the shed because I didn't know living here for our first year what the snow was going to be and luckily I moved these because these would have been under about 10 foot of snow but I came out here and all the way past your pickup out here on these boards were just littered with dead bees yeah everywhere around here yeah so that's called it what they do during the winter on warmer days they'll do what they call a cleansing flight that's when they leave the hive because they don't poop all winter when they are in the hive they won't poop in their hive so they fly out and they go poop and then they come back but if it's too cold it's still below zero <laughs> they fly out and they just can't they just fall no. they just die I actually got to witness that last year with one of my hives. I'd watch them, they'd go about 10 feet, and they'd just drop. And there's a straight line of dead bees. It was crazy, and it was during a really cold snap. I couldn't believe they were out, and that hive died out on me. Well, we had winter here from October till April. Yeah, exactly. And one of our biggest problems here is the humidity level. And you were talking about how they keep warm in the humidity, which made it condensate more. Which right. water's not their friend then. Moisture is not their friend, not inside of a hive. That's why I was telling you I think these hives have done so well because you know their hives are falling apart. And so there's ventilation holes everywhere. And so they had adequate ventilation. I think the problem with these two hives is they just starved out. I'm reaching down in here. There's comb, burr comb, with this outside frame all over. I'm trying to get some of it out so we can go to the next frame. Once I get this get a couple frames out here it should go fairly easy I think how often do you run into boxes this well maintained <laughs> first time good <laughs> I've seen it on other videos I watched the video here a while back on YouTube where some people had a power company kept calling this beekeeper these beekeepers somewhere back east and they're saying they told these beekeepers, there's some hives out here under these power lines. They've been here for as long as we've been employed here. If you guys don't come get them or do something with them, we're going to spray them with poison and get rid of them because we don't want them right under our power lines. We can't work. And so they went out there and got into it. They videoed the whole thing. And they didn't figure those hives have got, been gotten into for 15 or 20 years at least. People set them out there and forgot about them. So did you curse yourself when you saw that video and thought, God, I wish that would happen to me? <laughs> I think I might have. Well, my thing is, you know, and I know I'm going to piss a lot of beekeepers off by saying this, but nature's smarter than we are. They have a way of maintaining themselves. They don't need our help necessarily. And I think this is proof in the pudding. Well, not to sound bad. Uh, bees have been around a lot longer we've been taking care of them. Yeah, exactly. I know several beekeepers that they say if you don't get in your hive every week, you know, and go through it and make sure everybody's doing okay, then you're a bad beekeeper. Well, depends on what your goals are as a beekeeper, you know, what I say. I mean, you're there to, to just have bees to pollinate? Are you there for honey? What's your I don't necessarily agree with that. I think a guy should get in there and check on him every now and again. And I do, but I don't think you should do it all the time. But they're calmer though. I will say that the more you're in your hive, the more they get used to you. They're even calmer yet. They had this one so glued in. It's probably safe about predator attacking us. I don't know if a bear could have got into them. Yeah, no kidding. This, this thing has 50 years of populace built up on it. I'm 
trying not to ruin the frames is what I'm trying not to do. You can hear me in that propolis. It's gluing me. I cut a piece out of this with my Leatherman. And it's uh, Stu sticky stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what propolis is, is tree sap. Tree sap's in different resins. And then they mix it with their own saliva and then they go around and they glue everything that they want glued. That's going to be fun to get off my knife. Yeah. It takes that rubbing alcohol or something to cut it. You know what's funny though is that stuff's worth about 50 bucks an ounce. Really? Yeah. People use it for health. I've never sold it, but a lot of beekeepers do. They actually have traps that you put on top of the beehive that the bees propolize up and then they take that and they scrape it and they sell it. Hmm. To the Orientals? Aye. Health food stores, whoever. And it's China, they have a lot of weird stuff they do. Yeah, they have a lot of their natural stuff they like. And this trip, this right here is trying to come apart. I'm hoping, here's what I'm hoping, we, once we get in here, I'm hoping what we find, lots of brood, queen cells, because this hive here should swarm if it hasn't already. I haven't seen it swarm, and I've been only checking once a week, but usually yeah, you catch well, it. I check mine all the time, and I rarely really actually see it happen. Oh. Yeah, it's going to happen at any point. Mm -hmm. Typically, at least with my hives lately, it's been between 9 and 11 in the mornings when they swarm. I don't know why that is, but that's typically when my hives have been swarming. As I get closer to the brood, they'll start getting a little more pissy, so we'll see how they act. I imagine they're the same if you end up killing a few frames, we've got some good ones here in this box. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. We have between what you got there and then these boxes, those frames already got pulled out and cleaned, cleaned up. Should have enough to make a good, or at least one or two good viable hives. Plus then the starter one here. Comb between the top box and the lower box. And it's proven to be a nightmare. down and then you got to filter to get all the junk out all those pills maybe we we'll get in another bucket some of that comb if we get some big chunks out this bee's bumping me right now uh, get some big chunks of comb out we can put it in frames yeah to, to reuse it for the bees Alright guys, this one here is being an absolute nightmare. I'm trying to be gentle with the frames is why I'm going slow. Alright, just calm down. Calm down. I'm not trying to hurt you. I know you guys don't think that. If 
this frame here you got some brood I'll show you what brood looks like so you have two different styles of brood you have drone brood and you have worker brood this one here is worker brood so we're actually getting close to the brood chamber as they call it and how can you tell the difference size of the brood itself of the cells I'll show you here in a minute. Let me get this frame. Try to get it pushed back together. And there we go. Well, this is, they'll probably glue it right back together for you. Oh, I don't know. Okay, see these these yeah. these here? Look like a muffin top. Yeah. Those like are drone. They're they're a larger cell, and they have like a muffin top on them. These on this side. You can see these? Yeah. They're flatter, they're a, a darker tan color, and they're a smaller cell. That's worker brood. Female. <coughs> worker. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set these frames down like this and continue on. Thankfully I can see into the bottom box now and I am seeing more frames. So that is a good sign. <sighs> what I'm doing is going on each side of the frame against the box cutting the years of propolis pretty much glued these frames completely shut it's amazing that they still do anything to these things I know Until I get zapped the first time, and then I'll. Yeah, so no reason you're gonna get stung. You're gonna get stung. If you don't want to get stung, don't get in the bees. I don't know if it's just me or what, but honeybee stings me. It doesn't really. I mean, it hurts when you first do it, but I don't swell up that bad. You don't. But uh, wasp stings me, Jesus. You know, it's funny because I'm allergic to yellow jackets. I have a pretty bad reaction to them, the honeybees. I still swell up, but nothing like the other jackets. That's what I'm... No, it's going to hurt, and you're going to swell just a little bit with the honeybee, but the yellow jacket... They're a different creature. Of course, <laughs> then you get the hornets. Oh, yeah. You get stung by a hornet, I can't see. Really? Oh, frick, I'll freaking you get stung in the face. I had one... Well, I got stung by nine of them. Hornets, so. Buggers.
you know, for bees that have never been messed with, I'm impressed with them. They're being pretty, uh, pretty docile. They're, they're, doing, they're getting a little pissy at me, but I'm sitting about six feet away from you, and I don't have hardly any near me. Yeah, they're mainly staying right here, aren't they? These frames are so propolized, man. Face. On top of your head, he's gone. Nope, he's back in your head. He wants me. He wants you. It's clear now. Yeah. Try not to get stung in the face anyway. I didn't think you were that pretty to begin with. <laughs> I don't need any uglier scars. Yeah, I better put on something. They're starting to get prettier too. I'll just throw on a jacket. And I did bring a spare in case they. getting it built up and put together. We're going to have to scrape frames as we go along. Kind of clean them up. You want me to go get my little pry bar thingy? <laughs> no, I won't. Yeah, yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah I can go get that and go get me a long fillet knife too and then I can help. What other tools should I use? Yeah. That's really probably about it. Okay. But all I use is these two no. All right, so on this frame, everybody, I got Blotchy brood, but brood. Um, all in brood. That's really about it. I'm on this side, worker brood. This side, we got a queen cup. It's swarm season here, so I'm, I'm expecting to find some swarm cells. I'm hoping we are, so because we're going to plan on doing some splits here off of this. Always looking for the queen. I see a drone with a deformed wing. clean these frames up kind of as we go along here we're going to transfer them into another box they're wanting to get me pretty bad but they haven't stung me yet so 
bumping me. Clean off the burr cone. Always looking for a clean. I have a feeling I'm going to need to put on some gloves here shortly. Even though I absolutely hate to. We got some worker brood comb that's. Alright, don't get me. I think I'm going to at least throw on my right hand glove. This one we're getting. Make sure this is still recording. And it is. I hate wearing gloves. You could even fire up smoker, that helped. Want, will you take that smoker, show some of this old straw in there, and get that thing going? Don't, there might be a lighter in that little box there. This will help calm them down too, we'll just smoke them a little bit. One thing I tell you, I'm always doing, anytime you get in your hive, you always want to look for the queen. I'm going to 
always want to know where she is. is she Mainly ever, so you don't hurt her. Does she ever change positions usually? Oh, she goes all over. Oh, so she never goes in the same area. Not, well, if she's working on one frame, you might find her there two or a couple days in a row. But she's all over. Like, here's a frame of worker brood. Okay. Flip this side upside down here. Give me a little puff right on there. doing here is trying to clean this dirt comb off. And what we're going to do is create another hive, right? That's right. I got a second hive I bought that's never been used. So what we're going to do here is take frames of brood, frames of pollen, frames of honey. We're going to orientate these frames in the hive similar to what they already got. So the brood frames always go in the middle. Pollen next to that, and honey on the outside. I like that I'm just cleaning these up the best I can. Get some years worth of propolis off of them. Is this for making that sugar drink in too? Yes, that is a feeder. They call that a frame feeder. So if you'll just pull all your, oh, five or six frames out, at least five or six. We're gonna set this frame in there. So just drop this down right into the middle. This is a frame of brood, little pollen on it. So now what do I do that you took my chair? <laughs> Grab an old box. Flip it on up on edge. That's how I always use for chairs. The odds are here the queen's gonna since we're up here messing around, and she's gonna move down. She's probably gonna be in that lower box. Back. Try to drive them down. I'm doing here is just pushing them out of my way. Can you over smoke these? You can. You know, some beekeepers, there's a guy I watch on YouTube on a regular basis. He's from Texas. And he's a commercial beekeeper. He smokes more than any of I've ever seen. But he has good luck with it. Doesn't matter if you use wood, straw. Oh, I got bees going up my pant legs. Nope, it doesn't matter, whatever you can find. Pine needles seem to work the best. Got one right here. In the double jean or inside? Inside. Oh, great. Yeah, typically I get stung by before I ever get them out. 
might see a naked guy running across your hayfield here. The bonus spot where we live. No neighbors, really. Normally I can't tape my cat thing. Need me to go get some duct tape? Yes, please. <laughs> All right, guys, well, it's been, what, 30 minutes, 33 minutes, and I've only gotten three frames out. Trying to salvage these frames the best we can. Ideally here, we'll find a queen cell in an ideal world. If not, we'll find some frames. That frame I just put in that box had eggs, too. seen a hive not messed with this for this long and so everything looks kind of odd. <laughs> the way they're doing things. On my first queen cell, I see it down in there.
So, worker brood, little drone brood, lots of pollen on this one. side lots of worker brood Queen still has a pretty darn good laying pattern trying to some of this scraped off interferes with some of it is worker brood but in order to get it fit into another box nicely doing what I gotta do On the queen cell, I'll show you that here in a minute. Not on this frame. That's what they call royal jelly, isn't it? No, a queen cell is what a royal jelly is what they feed a queen. Oh. They actually feed a, some of, a little bit of it to all be babies, but a queen they feed constantly royal jelly. That's what turns her into a queen. But a queen cell is what she's in. That's how they, they build a special cell just for her because she's larger. For the most part, yeah, they're I mean, for again for not being messed with. I'm sitting six feet away from you in the t-shirt. Yeah. And I really have no activity near me. I think that's the problem with people though that don't know bees at all. They're afraid that they're just gonna get stung all the time. Well, one thing about one one of the biggest things you can do to not get stung, stay calm. Just stay calm. They're just buzzing around. Swatting. They're not like, you know, everybody thinks they're like yellow jackets and hornets. They don't purposely come after you. They're a totally different species. I'm going to hand you this frame. Feel comfortable grabbing it? Yep. You grab it just right in the middle like I am. Always feel for bees and just set it right next to that one. So there's your two frames of brood. Brood and there's a lot of pollen on that one too. And stupid smoker went out again. What we need to do is light it, pull this stuff out, light it underneath, and then relight it. Okay. I brought some pellets with me. Now we can just shove some straw down. So you pretty much don't do this for financial, you do it more humanitarian. Pretty it's much. Into it for. Yeah. Like you said, it's an expensive hobby. It is an expensive it. hobby and and I don't have time to do it full time. I got too many other irons in the fire. Is there enough demand in this area for Oh yeah. Is if it? a person wanted to go full time and do bees, you could. Where the money is, it's not in the honey, it's in the bees. Uh, by making nukes kind of like what we're doing here 
let's just say you wanted to get into this and you want to make a nuke and you have nuke boxes like what's in the back of my truck you can make one up add a queen to it or wait for them to make their own queen there's 150 bucks that quick and you can do that several times in one high several times a year well no like at a one hive during the spring you only really make nukes during the spring Between our own business, we do dietary supplements for a living, what I do, for my main source of income. And then uh, firefighting in the, for three months out of the year, basically. That's probably the bottom of this box. What's that? I think that is a wax moth. Where was that at? Down here in the bottom. It's wax moth larva. What we're going to do here is pull this frame out, put into your box. This has a queen cell on it. So that will be your queen for that hive. So how long until this hive is? Prospering. Say that again. How long until this hive is prospering? Well, the queen, the queen here is capped, so she can't have more than a week before she'll hatch. I wouldn't think. It'll take her another week, week and a half, before she starts laying. So I'd say within two to three weeks, this queen will start producing in that colony. And then so we'll start two, building. Two complete colonies. Two complete colonies. We can actually divide this again, as long as we find... We don't have to find queen cells, but what we can find is eggs where the queen just laid. And then they'll turn one of those eggs into a queen. So you said you could split a hive two or three times. Yeah. So technically, if we get this one going, you could split six times. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to split that one again this year. We'd wait till next year once they build up real good. and then you could split it again. Okay, so this frame, oh no, nope, not a queen cell, it's a queen cup. Okay, so if you look right here, see this cell? Yeah. That's called a queen cup. Queen hasn't laid an egg in it yet, and they haven't capped it over. I thought they had, it looked like it. Different thing. That doesn't mean we won't find more. Those are really big cells. Mm hmm They are very large. And again, I'm always looking for the queen, but odds are, since we've been smoking, she's down. We pushed her down. They take her to protection pretty quick when they're calling some. Yeah, well, she takes herself. She knows that she's the one and only. Without her, she's. This the hive isn't nothing really. You already got two frames of brood in that one. One 
would say you really need any more than that to get rolling. Those are both good frames of brood. I'm going to look here for eggs. I might have to get out in the sun to see them. They look like a grain of rice down on the bottom of the cell. A really tiny grain of rice. My eyesight isn't the best, so I have a hard time seeing it. What's your wife do? Wife works at Cash and Carry. I never did get uh, a duct tape from me. Yeah, I got it here. I think I'll go ahead and do that before I got these crawling off my legs again. Problem is, I got my feet right in front of their entrance. If you do this right, I could have three hives today. Oh, yeah. You're just going to be a portable one. Huh? If you do this right, you'll have three hives today. You'll just be my portable hive. Yeah. Pretty much. No colonizing your legs. Exactly. Start building foam on my leg. I've gone into that Askers a couple times. Yeah. I got a buddy that got me into that dang Frisbee Golf. Oh! <laughs> like that? It's fun. Cheap entertainment. Yeah. I only have time to do it twice. Uh, I have a buddy who did a firefighting season last year. We play that all the time down there in Lewiston. They have parks set up down there just for that. Yep, right there in Greenville. Oh, they do? Yeah. And I got some buddies that play down in Boise that say Greenville's one of the nicest courses. Or it's a nice course. Alright. Make sure this is still recording. Yep. I'm going to swap batteries. Well, I think what we'll do is stop recording for a little while. Okay. And then when we get closer, I'll start it again. Okay, just a real quick update here. Um, battery's getting low on my camera and I forgot to bring a spare. So we got the entire frames loose. Have not seen the queen yet, but we're gonna transfer all of these frames into another box and look for the queen while we're doing it. Uh, this, these frames here are extra deep so I don't know what you call them but they're deeper than a standard deep frame so it's kind of interesting these are not this is another one of the hives yeah there's a deep frame can we get there's a deep frame compared to these or another inch and a half or so longer you can see how rough some of this old equipment is Anyway, we're going to try to make some splits now and start moving along here. I'll get a few photos before this battery goes totally All right, dead. I'm back. Uh, we got everything wrapped up here. We uh, made a split into that box. The original hive, we found the queen, put her back in her original hive. Uh, a nuke box there, which is nothing done with that. And then I got a nuke box to take home and start another hive out of these bees so we're pretty good today thanks for watching everybody